and welcome to Rolling. Ah, welcome to Rolling Tensions. My name is Jason. Um, uh, today we're playing uh, Heroin, um, and I have some special guests with me today. Hi, this is Bug from. Uh, it's been so long, I don't even remember the name of my own podcast, but I'm here today with uh, Jason on Rolling Intentions. Rolling. Oh shit, Rolling Intentions. That's right. Yes. That's an awesome name for a podcast. Where do I find it? <laughs> uh, this is Josh Jordan, the writer of Heroin and General Troublemaker. Awesome. All right, so it looks like I'm going to be the narrator for this game. Um, I have the rules in front of me. I certainly hope I can play the rules, but I did read over the narrator stuff uh, again uh, this morning, uh, so I'm hoping that I can go ahead and somehow get that uh, working. So uh, as for... Uh, which one of you are going to be playing the heroine? Um, I have no preference. Bugman, do you, do you want to be the most background player or the or the middle? Do you want to be a companion or a heroine this time? The heroine gets all the spotlight. Um, I'll go with companion for now. Okay. Yeah. I played it safe. All right, cool. Are we ready to do an introduction? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. All right. Um, nice. So the for the introduction, the heroine kind of describes her regular life, describes a problem that she's dealing with, and at some point the narrator jumps in and starts and kind of takes over the scene and says, "All right, it's some kind of a giant portal, or you see you see a monster. What do you do? That kind of thing." Yeah. So I'm imagining uh, you've got a like a 15-year-old girl. I'm going to call her... Let's see. Uh, I'm going to call her Kim. And she is part of a... She's got a one-parent family. Her, her mom works a lot of the time, so she's kind of home by herself. And she spends way too much time just playing games on the computer. So she hasn't really been doing her homework, and she's got a little bit of a problem with uh, her grades at school. So uh, we're maybe see, I'm thinking we're gonna see her at school, and she's been asked to stay after class by her final teacher of the day, and he's gonna start chewing her out about spending all her time, uh, you know, texting on her phone in class and playing. Her crazy uh, staying games. up and, and playing her video games. Not in class, but, uh, you know, causing her to sleep in class and all that kind of stuff. What kind of video games does she play? What's her genre? That she, um, she likes kind of... MMOs or something? Yeah, she likes kind of MMOs. Maybe some anime-type uh, flavor to it, but mostly just MMOs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fun. And right. she makes makes her friends call her Kim San. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Alright. So, um right. So uh the uh the teacher, um, he's a, uh he's about to retire, right? So this is like a really traditional um uh, what what's his name? Give him a name. Uh oh there's Stuart. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones, cool. Hey Stuart. Hey. Well, I guess you guys introduced yourself when 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 it was appropriate for your companion. So we got this uh, this old teacher uh, about to retire. This is his final year. Um, he's seen a lot of you know bad students. He's seen a lot of uh, delinquents and whatnot. And uh, he looks at you, and uh, uh, his eyes seem to say, you know, oh, this person's not, you know, this person's not a delinquent. I think that you know she just needs to smarten up a little bit. Um, but give him a name. What's his name? The teacher? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Jones? James yeah. Earl. James, James Earl. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jones, okay. Hyphenated, though. <clears throat> and, once, <laughs> <laughs> and what's one thing he calls uh, you in class? Like, what, what's the name that he uses? Like a nickname or something? <clears throat> mm, maybe he calls me... Uh, Miss Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Thomas. Okay, perfect. All right, cool. Thanks. 
All right, so he's up in front of the cl- uh, up in front of the group, and everybody goes to leave, and he stops. And says, "Not you, Miss Thomas." Oh, oh man! Nope. this is the last time. I've seen your your head drop in class five times today. Did you even write anything down? I I, I wanted to take notes, but you won't let me use my phone. Well, phones are not meant to be used during class time. That's why I, so I provided you with an exercise book and a, uh, and, and a pen. Do it the oh. old-fashioned way. That's how we had to learn. Oh, Mr. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you're here, I'm going to have to call your parents let them know. Well, my mom's working, but you're welcome to try. So... Why are you always falling asleep? What's wrong with you? Uh, I, well, I, I stay up playing my favorite game, and I just forget to go to, to go to bed until 2 or 3. And then I have to get up early to take the bus. <laughs> you kids and your games. Don't you know there's more to it? Why don't you read a book for once? And he, you know, goes through his desk and says, Here, look, I got a great book for you. And he hands you, like, this, uh, uh, old, it's kind of like um, it's one of those uh, thick kind of books. A lot of a lot of words. It's a little bit small, uh, but it has like um, sort of like a fairy tale cover to it. But old fashions from like I don't know the, the 80s or the 70s, right? So it's okay. like a like an older older book. And he's like, why don't you read this instead of playing your video games? You'll have a you'll, you'll have a better mind uh, than you know spending all that time in front of the screen. I want you to read this book um, and come back to me uh, with a report <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's your assignment tonight, and then I'll and if and if you do that, then I won't tell your parents, and I'll even give you a better grade. I'll I'll, I'll boost up your marks based on doing this. Okay. Um, yeah. She re- <laughs> she reluctantly accepts the book. All right. Cool. Um, All right. So. Um, so then he's like, good enough. You know, in my day, if we had to do this, well, we get ten straps and knuckles. And yes, sir. <laughs> and 50 feet of snow is what I had to go through to get to here. Don't you understand how hard we had it? Now, okay. go on, now, young and Find yourself a new adventure. Okay. Stay away from the computer games. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um... Fair enough. So uh, he just lets you, gives you his book, and, and lets you go on your way. Okay. Um, I take the book. I start start heading towards the bus. I kind of peek inside of it just to see what it looks like. Maybe skim it a little bit. So, like, as you go through uh, the pages, um, something weird starts happening. Um, you just begin. Uh, the pages they have words on them, so like they're little tiny words. So it's just like. Holy crap! How am I supposed to read all this type of like overwhelming type of book, right? Uh, but something weird happens as you begin reading the book. Like the words turn into like pictures almost. You can almost imagine things that are happening. And uh, uh, and uh, when when you look up uh, from your book, um, something happens. Like when you uh, skim through the pages, uh, and you're reading it. Uh, you look up, you're no longer in the same spot you were to before. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Uh, well. Uh, so, so what I'm pit- so what I'm picturing with the world. I don't know if it's um, if if it's uh, something, but like I was thinking of more of a mixture of like something that's with her day to day life, like the computer games and such, but mm-hmm. uh, mixed in. So yeah. So I'm thinking like. When you look up, um, it's going to be like a vast, grassy area. Um, it reminds you of one of the places that you spent most of your time in when you're playing your MMOs, right? Like a large, grassy field, and there's like little little monsters going around, and some you don't really see anybody else around, but you see like little, I don't know, creatures, which I'll let the Bug, I guess, figure out what, the, what those creatures are. But Okay. Yeah. So cool. go ahead. She definitely looks around and is like a little worried about not as worried as you'd think, but a little worried about all of the creatures. <clears throat> She's like, "Oh, I better find myself a a sword or something." You know, this 
This looks like they look pretty friendly, but some of them are probably dangerous. So she oh, just she jumps of... right in. Well, sure. Uh, I mean, this is her bread and butter. She's she's freaked out, but not that freaked out. Mm -hmm. It's like a dream come true. She's in the video game world now. <laughs> Everything's a little pixelated. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of like, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, I wonder how many frames per second this is. <laughs> awesome. All right. Um, yeah. So, it was. It's a, is that the good? Do we do we include yeah. on the intro there? I think so. Yeah. All right. All right. So the uh, next thing would be uh, <laughs> chapter one. So, what, what sort of things did you guys want to see happen in this? Uh, well, I, I'm guessing that Bug will introduce his companion. Do you feel like you got enough for the, of the world in order to pick uh, a companion that you'd want to play, or do you want do you want us to like? You could you could drop from like any MMO. Like I'm basically make it like very broad. You can even make mm -hmm. it up something completely. It could be like I don't know um, a webkin. I don't care. <laughs> like oh, what? Right? <laughs> a webkin. I don't know. What is a webkin? You don't know, know what a webkin up. is? I have to look it up now. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, you whatever you want, right? Mm -hmm. You can be a creature. You can be another person. You could even be like another player. You know. Mm -hmm. who's like okay, I'm not. thinking um, a pig farmer who is a literal pig, who's got <laughs> an exclamation mark over his head. <laughs> at least, at least until you talk to him. Okay. Nice. <laughs> nice. All right. So you see, like, a, a pig, um, and he has He seems to be, um, yeah, he seems to have, like, a, a problem. I <laughs> have a yellow exclamation mark floating over his head. <laughs> seems to okay. be an issue. <laughs> well, uh, Kim uh, walks, <laughs> walks over to him and says, says hello. Says, Excuse me. How may I help you? Yes, um, I appear to be lost. Do you? Could you tell me where I am? Well, I'll tell you right now, you don't want to be lost here. It's almost tornado season. It'll be running through here in practically any minute now. That's why I'm moving. You're moving? Where are you hey, moving uh, to? North. North? Uh, yep. Well, uh, do you need any help? That'd be mildly kind of you, Miss... Uh... Kim. My friends call me Kim-san. <laughs> Miss Kim-san. Nice to meet you. My name is... <laughs> Joe Jack. Joe Jack. Uh, just, just, uh, just a question uh, for you, Joe Jack. Um, can you um, give me uh, something that you're that Joe Jack is really good at? Um, Joe Jack is really good at. Mm. Hmm. Now, you, what you can do, you can you can wait and come up with that later. Okay. But uh, when you find out, just let me know. Uh, also, if you have like a weakness in mind, let me know when that happens. So, like, if you get into trouble, say, "Oh yeah, he's getting he's doing this because of this reason." Stuff like that. So okay. then I have something to go on, right? That's all. It helps us push your buttons. Exactly. All right. Uh, for a weakness, I believe um, if he sees any pile of food, he will make a beeline for it. <laughs> all right. Well, that's something I can go with. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. All right, cool. Thanks. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Joe Jack, well, it's, it's nice to meet you. Um, could could you tell me, like, how soon are you planning on moving? The wind uh, begins picking up a little bit. You begin feeling like a little breeze. The stuff, this your your the pages in the book you have in your hand are starting to flip a little bit. Oh, probably I, as soon as we can. Okay, I I kind of tuck the book under my arm and look around to see if there's anything that I can like help carry. Does does do you have a wagon or something like that? Oh, no, I usually just carry everything in my backpack. 
Oh, okay. And then you see um, him, like, stuffing various pots and pans and a seemingly um, bottomless backpack. It seems that there is just room in this, <laughs> let's call it an inventory, for whatever you stick in there. Nice. He pulls out a car, like, ah, oh, get a mount. <laughs> <laughs> Kim kind of looks at her backpack and then and just kind of, like, hits the bottom of it, and it's... It's just a normal one. She kind of frowns like, I wish I had one of those. Oh, uh, well, you can use mine. Oh, uh, well, maybe after you're done moving, I can borrow it. All right. Okay. So uh, we uh, lead the way, and let, let me know if there's anything I can do to help. All right. So I guess... Um, he literally packs up his entire house in front of you. Um, what we can say is um, uh, when you guys actually finish packing up, mm -hmm. um, there is a, a pile of... Uh, um, well, what, what are the things... Like, you said a farm, right? Mm -hmm. So there's still food uh, that's in the ground. Like, it's not been... Uh, plucked up yet, right? Because you just kind of pull it out of the ground and it's already, you know, ripe, right? Uh -huh. little, little, little smiley face on each of the vegetables, <laughs> right? Kind of a like, little happy face. Um, probably not when you eat them, but hey. Um, but yeah, the, and, and like the vegetables would talk, right? Be like, help us! Because the tornado is starting to swarm. You can actually feel like the, the drift now as the, the air picks up drastically more. Okay, so the vegetables are talking? Or? Yeah, the vegetables are talking, yeah. Okay. Uh, Joe Jack, should we be worried about that? Do, do we need to, like, protect your your carrots and stuff? Nah, don't worry, I'll take care of that. And he ambles over and starts eating them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, the question is, is uh, uh, if, you're, if you were, like, uh, trying to get in the trouble or anything like that, uh, because the tornado is about to arrive, so um, you have everything packed up except for your vegetables. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if you want it, because the challenge is going to be uh, coming up soon. So I didn't so know if you want it. Do you want? Are you gonna help us seek cover, or are you gonna stay here and eat all the food? <laughs> <laughs> he's he's gonna dig in. He's gonna pack the vegetables in his stomach. Okay. All right. Uh, Kim is starting to get worried, and she starts looking around for some kind of shelter to avoid the what she suspects the oncoming tornado. There's lots of trees around, but the trees are not going to be much cover for very long. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, hiding in Joe Jack's backpack is a little too silly. <laughs> uh, okay. Is there anybody else there that she can talk to you? Or is everybody running in a particular direction? Uh, well, we're, we're going to say, like, the, the farm's in the middle of, like, nowhere. Joe Jack's okay. farm. Uh, he just kind of packs up and goes wherever. Like, there's no danger, right? So this area's got a bunch of, like, little monsters, and when they jump, like, they have, like, little numbers over their head, right? Uh, this little, the, like, little black little fur ball thingies with a, with a long tail and a, a fluffy end. Uh, and they're just hopping around. They're not hostile. Um, and they seem to be going away from the tornado, the, the large gusts. And it's, it's beginning... You can actually see it in the horizon, like, coming towards you. And you can even see that it's coming directly down your path, almost like it's it's following you, in a sense. Like, uh -oh. it's meant to go down this pathway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh... Joe Jack's hat flies off. <laughs> Your hat. Well, uh, Kim pulls out her book and starts slipping through it to see if there's an index in the back. As yeah, it's, it's actually the, uh, the the book to the manual to the game. Oh, oh, well, that's useful. Like, try to look up tornadoes and see if there's something useful in there. Uh, we look it up. It says tornadoes uh, arrive all over. Uh, what's the name of the the area that you're in? Hmm. Joe Jack, do you have an opinion? Okay, um, it's called 
Cathaway. Catha? Cathaway? Yeah. So it says, tornadoes fly all over Cathaway. Watch out, they deal lots of damage. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, but probably not fatal damage, right? You can probably tank that. <laughs> Uh, so um, the tornado is about to come streaming over your uh, your your crops as you're eating them. Are you going to? Uh... Oh God! I start eating faster. <laughs> okay. It sounds like you're trying to uh, uh, get in the trouble. <laughs> yeah. Miss Kim, yeah. help out. Because <laughs> you're like. <laughs> okay. So, uh, do you want to have have? Bug, roll his 2d6 for sure. getting into trouble. Sure, roll, roll your 2d6 for getting into trouble, Bug. Five. Oh. All right, well, you get three drama points. Hooray. Three drama uh, But our heroine, uh, heroine sorry, uh, now has a negative two to the challenge that's coming up. Oh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. So, and the challenge, which I'm going to issue now, since whether or not you help him or not eat, um, is that the tornado is uh, coming coming in to rip through uh, the entire remainder of the farm. Your companion is definitely in trouble. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's the challenge issue. It's the giant tornado. Okay. Uh, I'm imagining that in, in the farm there's, like... There is a little bit of a ditch, and it's right next to the compost pile. Okay. So she she's going to try to grab Jojack and go hide in the ditch, but there's a chance. That, and so she's going to use the be successful move. Ooh, be successful. Okay, cool. Let's see how she's successful. All right. I got a 10 with a eight. minus 2, so that's an 8. So, you are heroic. Yes. So she manages to g- grab Jojack and run for the ditch and maybe uh, stop al- along the way, kind of do a, a baseball slide into the ditch and <laughs> grab Jojack's hat along the way. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. So the, uh, the tornado just whisks through, and it just makes like a Z pattern. Uh, and it just tears up the remainder of the crops, and uh, it just keeps going straight in a straight line. It'll be back again, probably. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, it's it's gone for now. The 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 uh, oh, oh some of the cr- uh, <laughs> some of the plants that were in the tornado fall down into the ditch, and they're like, ow, ow. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay. So let me see. All right, so is that a good place for this chapter? Yeah, as as a good ending for chapter one. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Sure. Okay. Well, let's go to uh, chapter two. The revenge of the carrot people. <laughs> <laughs> so, what kind of scene are you guys thinking of, or, or should I uh, come up with something for you? Mm, I think we should go go somewhere. Because uh, his his uh, farm is kind of kind of toast. Mm. Maybe we well, travel. Well, we can we can travel north, right? Because that's yeah. what he said he wanted to do is travel yeah. north. So, uh, with you know your house in your in your bag and uh, your 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 manual. There's a map is in the manual. Okay. It's very much like a Zelda map, so it's all like <laughs> pixelated and it's like a, a little a little dot where you're two. On the map. Okay. So, but it's like it's it's paper, but it's like wow, it's smart paper. Nice. <laughs> right. uh, so you travel north. Uh, what sort of um, sort of dangers are to the north? A uh, 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 bug? Why why did okay? Why did you avoid the north for so long? Um, because though that area is reserved for higher level people, and as an NPC. JoJ can't really gain any levels. He doesn't. Um, he doesn't have any fighting ability. Okay. I should say. So, so by higher level, what kind of, uh, what kind of like, what kind of atmosphere we're we talking about up there? I mean. 
Um, like you went from a, a sandy tornado, kind of like a couple trees area with a big ditch to uh, what uh, kind to of the, the forest level? Ooh, and the forest got like spiders kind of crawling around and stuff. Spiders, bunches of uh, webs, dead trees. Oh, scary. Cool. So you guys just enter the forest of uh, of ultimate doom. <laughs> We've been trying to get that renamed for the last couple of years, but <laughs> seems like a good spot to go to. The signs are really expensive to change, so they just kind of leave it that way. Yeah. Um, all right. So um, there's a lot of uh, vines around. Um, the the area is kind of foggy because um, there's like a low. Uh, mist that kind of goes off the stuff, and uh, it's definitely creepy. Um, uh, in the distance, um, you can almost see like there's like a, um, like creatures uh, in the distance, but like you can only like see their shadows of because you can't really get a clear picture of of what you're looking at. Um, okay. So, um, yeah. Uh, as you guys uh, get in there, um, you're no longer... You're, no, <laughs> you're safe from the tornadoes, at least. So, um, Well, that's good. Uh, Kim starts looking around for some kind of a, a stick or a club or something that she can carry. Because she feels like she's <laughs> been unarmed all the way through the tutorial level. And she may not... This may not be a combat game, but she she would feel silly if she didn't at least check around to see if there's like some vine lassos or some some pointy sticks nearby. Sure. Okay. Um. So uh, there is a bug. There I, I, there's a there's a great um evil here. I mean it's it's not like it's the uh, the ultimate evil, but uh, there's there's something particular you fear here. Do you, do you have any idea what it is? Oh, yeah, while they're uh, walking along, um, Joe Jack says, um, you might want to stay away from the vines. Uh-oh. What's what's going on with those? Well, apart from being non-edible, they've sort of got a mind of their own. <laughs> and believe me, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Cool. So the vines begin kind of wiggling and wobbling, and uh, uh, in fact, uh, because of the mist, you couldn't even see some, and they were right under your feet, so they were kind of like, kind of like graspy a little bit, but they're kind of slow, so you can almost get out of their, their graspy little vine hands. Okay. Um, That's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Kim, Kim looks more nervous about that than she was about the tornado, just because that's, like, gross weird, and... <laughs> Who knows? It may be, may be literally less dangerous than a tornado, but it definitely seems scarier. Hmm. It's all right, as long as you keep your distance away from them. Oh, you might also want to tie back your hair or something. <laughs> okay. She kind of she kind of pulls out a little scrunchie and puts it on and keeps her hair back. So... No. so so the pathways seem to be kind of windy and uh, confusing uh, when you uh, look at uh, look at it from a from the, from your certain angle. Uh, it looks like you're you don't even remember your way back. It almost feel like you're kind of lost there. Um, and uh, being that there's a lot of creepy crawlies and and, and vines that are sentient or are on, on their own, anyways, uh, it's it seems to be kind of a, a dangerous spot to be in. Um, However, uh, from behind, uh, there seems to be uh, a, one particular uh, spider uh, stalking you in the trees above, kind of dripping goo from its mouth as it uh, it's seen its new its next meal probably. Okay. Uh, well, Joe Jack, do you know anything about giant spiders? And how to stop them? I start flipping through the manual to see if there are any tips. <laughs> uh, giant spiders are bigger than usual. Uh... <laughs> also not edible. 
Also awesome. not edible. <laughs> At least you shouldn't. Okay. <laughs> the Spider-Mon is, uh, has 33 hit points and is level 12. Oh. Um, watch out for his venomous strike. Um, and, his, and his spitting webs. Gross. Exclamation mark. Spider-Man. Okay. Uh, well, since we aren't exactly sure where we're going, we, at this point, I imagine we're mostly just trying to go uh, follow the path away from the spider. But, sure. Um, I I'm also looking, you know, for for a big rock or something. Like Kim seems to have a bit of a uh, a bit of a penchant for looking for the stabby way out of the problem even though she doesn't have any real world experience in doing that. No, but she played fighters all the time, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the uh, um, Joe Jack's strength, can it be that um, he's got anything that um, tries to attack him just sort of bounces off of his stomach? <laughs> so basically he's got he's, he's almost invulnerable. Sort of like to attacks? Almost. Sure. Sure, okay. Okay. So how how what is uh what is Joe Jack planning on doing to the situation? I mean you know that the that the force is dangerous. Uh you also know it's very close to another area. Uh, yeah, so like uh like there there's a there's a reason not to go to the uh to north of here. Like this like this is like if if you if you went uh, any further than this location, you, you'll be in more trouble even so than, than what you're at now. So um, so there's actually somewhere more dangerous north of here? Yes. And we're heading north? Yes. Oh my god, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> so the spider begins kind of lurking. Uh, it's, uh, it's on its... It, it just falls to the ground. And as it begins skittering towards you, uh, it's little mandibles, uh, kind of opening and closing, as it uh, as it gets closer. Does it? What does Joe Jack want to do? Yeah, what does Joe Jack want to do? Um, Joe Jack's gonna try kicking it. Kim, run! So he's gonna help the heroine. Yes. Okay. So what you do is uh, for helping the heroine is uh, you spend. Is it a, uh, one point or two points? Let's spend one point. Yep. And the narrator then gets also gets a point. Right. So I get a point then. So the spider begins skiddling over, and uh, uh, you give it a kick. So um, I guess the challenge is, uh, I mean, for the heroine, I mean, what, how does she react to this? I think she's going to... Um, she's going to fight it or, or run? She's going she's gonna to try something different. Um, I'm going to use Be Heroic, and she's going to pull out her cell phone and tries, try to play some sort of music on it to, to calm the spider, because she thinks maybe she can hypnotize it with her, with her uh, 90s techno downloads. So she's actually a bard class, I see. Yeah, she's, she's trying it out, because she doesn't feel like she has any any weapons that can handle a level 12 monster with 33 hit points. <laughs> okay, sure. Go ahead. Okay, so... Up, I roll a 6, but with help the heroine, Plus two. that makes it an 8. Yeah. Okay, so she manages to to succeed in uh, if not if not hypnotizing at least distracting the spider sure the spider uh, uh, stops and uh, he hears the music and the music is actually uh, the theme song to the game but of course the people in the in, in the in the game world doesn't under, don't understand that they just know it's the the song of like the holy like a holy like a, some kind of music that's that, that's powerful right uh, and it begins talking. The spider begins talking. It's like, who are you, and what bring you here? Drool, drool. I'm I'm Kim, and this is my friend Joe Jack, and we're heading north uh, for reasons I don't totally understand. <laughs> and the, the the spider drools a bit more. It's like, how do you know the song of our people? 
oh, it, it, it just appeared on my phone, and I thought it might, it might soothe you. You hear the vegetables in this backpack begin talking a little bit. It's like, it's like, ooh, such a great melody. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> they all begin say, say, uh, talking in sync. Uh, and then the spider's like, <clears throat> North. You don't want to go north. North is where he is. Uh oh. Who? Who's? Who is he? You don't know who he is. No, I'm new here. I, in fact, I'm just looking for a way to get back home. Get back home? What do you mean? I, I'm from a faraway land called Cleveland. <laughs> and I'm just trying to figure out how to get back there. Cleveland? I never heard no Cleveland. Ah, uh, you must be from the other islands. The I other guess. Pl- well... There's only one play. Uh, there was only one uh, a play. A uh, person you have to worry about on this island, and that's him, the man, the the the. Um, well, what's his name? Uh, give him a name, bug. You you probably know who he is. His name is Torgoth. Torgoth, and what is Torgoth's? Uh, Ability, like what? What kind of character is Torgoth, the, or what is he known as? Torgoth the. The title, yeah. Torgoth the Mad. Torgoth the. Torgoth the, the Imperialist. The Imperialist. He believes in rapid expansion. Okay. Sure. So we have Torgoth the Imperialist. He will take us all over soon enough. He already owns the other islands. So you must be a runaway from the other islands. From Torgoth. Uh, not that I know of. I mean, I didn't pay that much uh, attention during history class, but I've never heard of <laughs> that name before. <laughs> ah, I see, I see. Well... Spider-Man will help you, he says. Spider-Man will get you to the north, if that's where you so desire. Oh, well, thank you, Spider-Man. You're the, so, you're the nicest arachnid I've ever met. And as you say that, he, he sees, like, a little crawling black furry thing from the from the level one area and just jumps on and goes, ah, nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Spider-Man <laughs> thanks you. <laughs> And it, be, it begins crawling on. Okay. <laughs> um, so he uh, brings you towards the, uh, the 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 northern area. So that's the end of chapter two. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. All right. Targoth so, the imperialist. Tar- <laughs> Targoth the imperialist. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, um, well, we we know that the Torgoth is plans on. Um, Taking over probably all the lands for himself. Um, don't know how to get you back yet, but hey, let's find out. Mm-hmm. So, uh, chapter three. Um, what kind of uh, land is Torgoth? Is, is it like a like a, a castle in the distance upon a city? Like you see walls of this gigantic thing, and the walls just keep expanding. Yeah, and um. There is the ground is colored a certain way that denotes his borders, and like every few hours, it actually expands out a little bit. You can actually see the dotted line. Yeah, <laughs> like of the land when it when it actually goes in his territory, and when you enter the other land, it's it's almost like the 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 ambient sounds of the forest suddenly turn into like a gong dong 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 dong. So it's just like you know a complete transition. <laughs> Of, uh, of it just by taking a single step over the line. <laughs> as, as long as there's no load screens, right? <laughs> yeah. No, no, there's no load screens. It's all, it's all on the hard drive, so we're good. Um, wow, powerful, <laughs> powerful computer. Yeah, 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 totally. Uh, so, um, yes, so you enter the uh, the new area. Uh, what we're going to say is that uh, in the distance, you can just see like it's. It's buildings upon buildings. It's just buildings everywhere. It's the forest looks like there used to be a forest here. It used to be part of the the, the bad big bad forest, but 
Um, it looks like it's been clear cut and cut down, and uh, the vines are just wiggling on the ground, like like dying because they're just you know they don't have any anywhere else to go or whatever. And um, okay. yeah, so um, ooh, ooh, I'm trying to think here. We could probably see like workers and stuff building yeah. new buildings and cutting down trees. Sure, and Spider Man comes over, you know, and says, "Ah, here you go." To the north. Okay. So, Brave One, where are you going to go now? Well, the, uh, the, do we know, uh, does Joe Jack know where he was headed? <laughs> uh, well, there used to be a, uh, I've heard that there was a uh, village just outside of the forest of Ultimate Doom, but it doesn't look like it's around here no more. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh, oh, indeed. So, uh, you see some people uh, hiding behind some trees. and They see you coming out, and they go, Ah! Kind of trying, trying uh. to scare you off. And it's just, Take, Go away, you imperialist scum! It's like, what? We're, we're not imperialists. No, I'm part of the labor class myself. What? Yeah. You, you, you're not trying to... Cut our place down and take away our, our villages? No, we were actually looking for the closest village just to, to visit. My friend here has recently been displaced by a tornado. Hmm. A, a very aggressive tornado. <laughs> a very linear tornado. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well... We're not too sure about that, but what we know is that our village is gone. It's been it's been taken over by the imperialists. You're not the imperialists, you said. Are you the imperialists? I don't remember what you said. I don't know if she said she was an imperialist or not. No, uh, no, not an imperialist. You're not. Then what are you then? You look like an imperialist. You wear weird clothes, and these people are kind of dressed up in like. Kind of like furs and stuff, like little. <laughs> I'm picking on these little fur ball things, but the little black fur patches <laughs> seem to be sewn together. <laughs> they seem to be plentiful, so. <laughs> they just no. Have little, yeah, they're all like little cute fur ball things. Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean you're not uh, a peerless? What are you? Well, I'm. I'm just a, a girl from Cleveland, who uh, found herself in this world. After reading a reading a magic book that was given to me by a strange old man, you know, one of those. <laughs> yeah, we have we have one of those strange old men too. You uh, do? Yeah, yeah. In our village, our other village. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you like to see our other village, not imperialist pig? Uh. <laughs> He's, you're saying that in kind of a creepy way. It makes me a little nervous. I don't have to take any sort of special pills to see the other village, do I? Uh, only one. Oh. But, but we have to hide it because if we don't hide it, then the imperialists will take over and we won't have a place to live anymore. And we'll have to live in the place, the force of ultimate doom and... Uh, uh, we don't get well with those spiders and those icky, webby things. And Spider-Man's Spider-Man is like, "What do you mean? We're not sticky at all." Oh come on! You know they have a bit of a point, Spider-Man. So uh, <laughs> Kim, Kim agrees. She she's interested in seeing the other village. What does okay. Joe What does Joe Jack think? Uh, Joe Jack has since been chewing on some web that he found on the ground, and uh, he nods in agreement. Okay. Cool. Uh, so um, he says, "Here, take this." He says, and he hands you um, visors, actually, um, and they're like three glasses, kind of like made of paper. Like, okay. A very advanced village. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And when you put them on, uh, you can see uh, uh, houses that are not that weren't there before. Cool. And, uh, he just gives you to walk over, and he's wearing his little three D glasses too. You walk into like this this village, and uh, 
everybody seems to be very um, low level here. Okay. Uh, does is are they letting Spider Man Spider Man come in, or cause he? Well, he's a spider, so does he have to have like four pairs of glasses on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got like four pairs. He's got okay. like yeah, yeah, he's got okay. like a bunch of different ones, and uh, and they, they don't really like Spider Man that much, right? Okay. So. They're giving That's them a hard time. They're like, oh, our supplies. Our supply of glasses. We won't be able to give them to them all, everybody. He's taking them all. Look at him. He's another spider. Like, uh, like them all. Greedy. Okay. Uh, I, I tried to, to tell Spider-Man to, to, you know, maybe wait outside for a little bit. You know, like, we appreciate your help, but you're kind of making these guys nervous. Uh, uh, I asked one of the villagers what the name of the village is. Bug, you have any idea what the name of the village is? Uh, Pachacuti. Pachacuti. Okay, Pachacuti. It's Pachacuti, named after the Pachacuti master, the 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 ultimate kung fu um, uh, master. The this the only one. It's he's the only one left that can fight against the imperialists, but he's too old and decrepit, so he can't do it. Oh, is he is he your the old man that you have? He's the old man. Oh, okay. Can I can I can I meet him? Sure, come on in. Um, and he opens up this door, and uh, you see a guy in there, and he's sitting down with like you know a whole bunch of arsenal of of weaponry, and some of them are questionable weaponry because they're they're not really weapons, like. There's like a broom handle there or something like that. But, um, he's he's just sitting there in like a meditation state, uh, wearing his 3D glasses. Uh, then he looks up at you and uh, he sees, "I've been waiting for you." Okay. Uh, I say, "Hello, hello, sir. I'm uh, I'm." He reminds you of your teacher, Kim San. <laughs> You, I, I tell him that he reminds me of, of the old man who sent me here from Cleveland. Oh, Miss Jones. It was Miss Jones, right? Uh, Miss, oh, Miss, Mr. Miss Thomas? I'm Miss, Miss Thomas. Thomas, right. Miss, oh, yeah. Miss Thomas, I know who you are. Don't worry. Wait. I, I was the one that requested your help, don't you know? You were? Yes, I heard that you were the best at what you do. Oh, uh, thank you. I wait. What is it that I do again? <laughs> you are the uh, the best at all the uh, the adventuring and the looting and getting epic loots. Oh, sense. okay. Yes, that, that, I I do have. Uh, I am quite elite. <laughs> you can do all that. Oh uh, well, sort of. I mean, I do it. I do it in the games back home, but ne never in a place quite like this. Well, Miss Thomas, I must tell you something. A great item must be found in order to beat the imperialists. Uh, but I do not wish to force you. Uh, you must. Be with one within yourself in order to, to to truly embrace the task ahead of you. Oh, okay. Um, the I, the book that you have. She kind of pulls it out. Have you have you read it yet? I I haven't read the whole thing, but I've started. <laughs> Perhaps by reading pages. that book, you'll know what to do. Okay. All right, so she starts. She starts to read the book, and, and says, "Thank you, Mr. Pachacuti, Pachacuti Sensei." <laughs> <laughs> yes, Kim San. I, <laughs> I I, ho I wish you the best of luck on your quests. Okay. Cool. Wait, did did he say what the item was? But or did he just tell me that it was that I'd figure it out by reading the book? Prob uh, he said that you figured it by reading the book, yeah. Okay, okay. Just making sure I remember right. Okay. 
so we leave the old man and maybe go look for a place to to like look for an inn or something to stay while Kim reads reads the book. Sure. Uh, as you go to the inn, um, Spider Man is there. Uh, he, he decided to enter town anyways, and he's like, "I want, to, I want to be, I want to, I want to, uh, I don't want to go back to the forest. That forest is scary. This place is much better. I want to stay here." Okay. Uh, well, as long as the villagers are okay with having having you, then. I- and that sounds like fun. I like this village a lot better than the Forest of Ultimate Doom, too. Uh, behind you, you see kind of a, a couple of things hanging off poles, like wrapped in silk and, or spider web. He's like, yeah, me too. I like this place better. Wait, is he... Are there villages, <laughs> villagers in there? I'm, I'm a little... Okay, I do a, a quick head count. Now the, we, yeah, it's uh, there's a uh, some wiggling sacks kind of hanging, and, <laughs> and he's kind of doing this with his two front uh, legs. Uh, <laughs> I like this place; it's better. Okay, well, uh, so it's like Spider Man. No, bad Spider. <laughs> Spider Man, that wasn't very nice, honey. <laughs> uh, so I guess uh, I'm gonna issue a challenge here. Okay. Uh, Spider-Man refuses to leave the uh, village, uh, and he wants to collect as much food items as he can. Um, but he doesn't seem to be very malicious. He just doesn't quite understand the the etiquette that eating your, you know, <laughs> the people that you're visiting is is wrong. So um, the challenge is going to be um, how you resolve that. Okay. Um, I think I. I think it would be fun to take a chance because sure. um, this this could, could go terribly wrong. And oh, this could go very wrong. <laughs> it, it wouldn't necessarily stop us from our main goal if this went terribly wrong, but, I mean, obviously Kim wants to resolve the situation without hurting anybody and without, you know, without any of the other villagers getting eaten. Sure. Uh, I guess, uh, Bug, you got a chance as well. Uh, I know we, we sort of issued the challenge already, but if you wanted to get in the trouble or, or help the heroine in the situation. Okay. Um, get in the trouble. While Kim is... <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I don't think he would dig into the villagers. He might be a vegetarian. No, he's not a vegetarian. But um, he's going to try to... Uh... He eats screaming vegetables. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but they don't have souls. Um, (laughs) he's going to uh, try to talk to Spider-Man about how um, people don't even taste that good okay so he's helping by saying they're yucky anyways (laughs) believe me I've tried (laughs) (laughs) okay I'll try anything anything once honey oh that's awesome okay go ahead so that's a that's a uh, you got to spend your point so I get a point. Okay. That's so you one point left for me. Uh, yep. And then two d six. Um, nope. You don't you don't roll. So are you, are oh. you was that you helping or was that you making things worse? It sounded yes, like you was, were helping. That was helping. Okay. That was helping. Okay. He was saying like they're gross. So you don't want to. Okay, so you don't have to you don't have to roll if you're helping. No, okay. you just spend a point and I get a point. Okay. Cool. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take a chance, and I get a plus two. Uh, okay, I roll a four, plus two is six, and let me double check. Yeah, on a six or lower, I fail no. and behave out of confusion, fear, or selfishness. Um, Uh-oh. <laughs> Also, you get uh, whenever I roll a seven or lower, Jason, you get an extra uh, an extra point. <laughs> Yummy! Ooh, three points. Oh, I got some stuff planned now. Ooh. All right. So how so how does it resolve? Or do I or do I tell you how to resolve? I mean, you can. Uh, you, I I'm just thinking that she, maybe she's freaked out and reacts out of fear. But if you've got a suggestion about how she how she fails to like, she maybe she like says, no, stop it, stop it, and gets stuck in the web, or maybe she just runs out. What do you think? 
Uh, what I think is uh, good is uh, he he says to uh, the companions, like, tastes bad. Spider-Man already had one. It was good. <laughs> and um, he's like, she looks pretty good, too. And he begins, like, making a ball of web. So, um, so out of fear, you're like, for your life, you begin... Get the hell out of Dodge, and you leave the the villagers to their own fate. Okay. Of Spider Man. <laughs> okay. It's like run away. Yeah, get out of here. Go run. And everybody's like, no, but the old man. <laughs> it's like maybe you can take his glasses away or something. <laughs> yeah. So you're like goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Right, you left the villages like, to their own fate. It's like, it's your fault for living here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you successfully uh, escape the uh, the village while you know Spider Man gets to have a little lunch. And he, <laughs> even if you take your glasses off, you can see the just you just see sacks of of webs forming on top of invisible platforms. You don't know where, where to come from if you take your glasses off. But okay. <laughs> otherwise, you can see they're, they're clearly hanging from the buildings and stuff now. So, he's capturing the town. All right, cool. All right, well, may maybe we'll come back later after I've mastered the secrets of the book. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's uh, the end right. of chapter uh, three. <laughs> cool. All right. So I think I think uh, Kim needs to spend some time. Well, we need to get somewhere where we can sit down long enough for her to read her book. Sure. So you need you need a bit of rest time. Yeah. Well, That's her um, going away. Sure. Uh, well, what we can say is uh, by the borders, um, just like a little lake, um, and uh, it seems kind of peaceful there. Uh, more so than I guess the tornado place, the you know where the spiders eating, you know. So it seems like a pretty alright place uh, between the borders, and um, she can she can have time to read her book. Okay, cool. So I'm imagining her pulling out her cell phone and playing another a track of uh, m maybe some montage music while <laughs> she's reading. Maybe the maybe the screen fades out and fades back in, and she's she's f just turning the last couple of pages. Sure, I'm gonna spend a point though. Oh, okay. Uh, when, when the screen fades back in, uh, the campaign is missing. Uh oh. <laughs> so he disappeared. Uh, what what does your character do when 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 the fades out? When the screen does go to a loading screen, what happens here? Where where did your guy go? Oh, Joe Jack. Yeah. Did he go off to find more food because he's kind of hungry? Uh, yeah, he was trying to uh, look over um, Kim San's shoulder uh, to read the book, but uh, he doesn't know how to read. So he wandered off uh, to try to find something uh, stick in his mouth. Sure. So he's gone to look for food. Awesome. Uh, so, so you can still help, by the way, or hinder uh, indirectly, um, as long as you can come up with ideas of things that you might have done that would have proved one or the other. Okay. Uh, I think there's other ways of doing that too, right, uh, Josh? Mm -hmm. you know, the, well, yeah, like, uh, whatever's going on, if you want to help or hinder, you can either say, oh, I left something for her that she just now notices, or else yeah. you can just describe what you're doing and think of some wacky excuse why that helps me, <laughs> like, one mile away. Okay. Yeah, like, totally. So you went. To, you went to find. Um, what's what's a famous food joint in this world? <laughs> uh, McDowell's. McDowell's. So you're lo you're gonna look for McDowell's. Uh, you heard that there's probably one in the in that in that imperialist village. <laughs> that apparently they're imperialists and they're capitalists. So. I'm imagining you going there and seeing that they have. Like hamburgers with instead of patties, they've got those little fuzzy tailed things <laughs> with a big smile on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Joe Jack's also heard that they've got oh, the big, called, uh, like your fur burger. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. They got bacon fur burgers, and he's curious to find out what that is. <laughs> awesome. Like, All right. What's so... a bacon burger? <laughs> <laughs> bacon burger? Awesome. 
Cool. All right, so when you look around uh, after, and I'll tell you, like, basically, uh, it goes through, like, as you were reading, like, you almost see, like, a scrolling text going up and a, and a, and a voice speaking, like, uh, and it talks about uh, this great weapon uh, de- defeated all, all imperialists across the land. Uh, it is known as the, as the great magical item of... Do uh, you have any idea what kind of item it is? Is it a is it a sword? Is it a, is it not even a, a weapon at all? Is it like Is it communism? <laughs> communism. <laughs> it's just a red flag. <laughs> <Not to know. laughs> mm, I think maybe it's like a it's like a a, a charger sh- for your cell phone? <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, I need one of these. I never have enough. Like a shovel or something like that. So it could, it might be a weapon, but it might just be a tool. Right. Mm. Okay. <laughs> a hammer and sickle. No. Um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a shovel. Okay. So it's a great magical shovel. The shovel has dug its way out of trouble <laughs> many a times uh, and has buried in peril. <laughs> sure. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> all right. So yeah. So that, that's the great item. Um, where, where, does it, where does it say it's located to? Mm, I think it's um, at the like at the bottom of the cursed well. Ooh, and the cursed well is inside of one of the the cities, the imperial towns. Yeah, I think so. Sure. sure. Okay. Well, it's now inside. It used to be where the, the old village was. So the old man, the old, he, he was guarding the the cursed well. So he was like, ah, you know. But but when the imperialists took it over, they took the will and all. So it's now in their territory. So now that you, with this information, what are you gonna do? I'm I'm gonna try to find uh, the imperialist village that has, you know, like I'm gonna try to head in that direction, which I assume is north. Of course, everything is north. Yes. It's like Mega Man, except for you know, it's north. It's it's not south. <laughs> it's certainly not. <laughs> okay, uh, so I I start traveling traveling north and keeping my eye out for the imperial city, and you know maybe I say out loud it's like I wonder how Jojack's doing as I continue on my path. How is Jojack doing? Um, he's debating between the uh, garden salad and the bacon fur burger. He's Does probably he have gonna go a... Does he have enough coin to pay for all that food? Um, he's going to try to uh, go off of the barter system and sell <laughs> oh, off yeah. parts of his house for food. <laughs> it's parts of his house for food? Okay. It's like, I got some shelves in here. <laughs> he's like, well, 50 shelves is 20 silver. You know, the exact barter system, right? Like, every shelf is worth <laughs> something. All right, cool. Oh, so you, you basically start selling... Important items for a burger. <laughs> no problem. It's, it's, it's symbolic, is what it is. <laughs> cool. All right. So, um, uh, you enter the uh, first imperialist town. Um, what? What? What is this? I guess this town's going to be called based off of the the, the main bad guy. So, Torgothurga. <laughs> Or Gothurga? Okay. Gothurga, the imperialist town of Tergothurga. And it's actually called the imperialist town of Tergothurga. Like the, the imperialist word is just used over and over again in this world for some reason. Um, <laughs> I, used to, I used to live in uh, Iowa City, in Iowa, and the, all of their uh, official stuff, like from the city government, would say from the city of Iowa City. So, <laughs> like, the imperial <laughs> town of the town of Torgothurga. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. All right. Uh, I start kind of, uh, you know, like, I, I uh, Kim starts looking, like, she tries to be nonchalant and look like she belongs there, but she's really just wandering around the town lost trying to find a well. Every, you see people walk by, and they have big swords and stuff, and, you know, they look all buff and with awesome loot, and you kind of look like somebody who doesn't belong here, right? Like, you're, you're a low level. You don't even have, like, 
you know, purple armor, and everybody's got purples. So <laughs> you don't you don't have that purple. So people kind of look at you strange and stuff. Um, and um, you approach this thing called the. It's called. It's just a sign, like a wooden sign, and it just says the cursed well. And you just see this well in the middle of the town. Uh, and you see like a. Uh, yeah, and it just seems like everybody's walking past it doing other things. It's just the cursed well in the middle of the town. And nobody really seems to pay it much attention other than the sign that's next to it. Okay. Does it have, like, a uh, uh, rope and bucket? Or is it just, like, an, an open well? Or is it is there a cover on it? Well, well uh, actually, over the sign is a giant question mark floating okay. in the air. Okay. Uh, I approach it. And I uh, so, push, push the A button. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, hey, when you do, um, it the, the the sign kind of folds open, sort of mm-hmm. like splits open, and then suddenly like just a whole bunch of new text. <laughs> okay. It, it, Greetings, adventurer. The great shovel lays here. Uh, retrieve it and uh, become the new uh, and 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 become the new hero of all the lands. And it just says on the bottom, there's like a little uh, accept button. Okay. I, down there. I, I will accept it. Sure. And then it just closes. <laughs> you see somebody crawling out of the out of the the, um, the well. Um, <laughs> and he looks like he got a shovel. And he he, he pushes the button and, and it go and it like the thing comes down, like the uh, the sign, and then he puts the shovel in there and then and it goes back up and, and money expenses from the sign. So he okay. just, you know, claimed his reward. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so does that mean that everyone can get the shovel, or that there is more than one shovel? Was he also from Cleveland? Yeah. Um, well, it seems like when people take the shovel, uh, the way that the imperialists uh, make people uh, from using the shovel is by re- awarding them to oh, cash the okay. shovel in, so it goes back down into the the, the well, the cursed well, and it just cycles. Nobody oh, okay. Ever keeps the item. Why would you ever want to keep a shovel? That doesn't make sense. Ah, so they don't know it's true. It's true worth. Okay. That's right. <laughs> the shovel is good for more than gold. Okay. Uh, well, Kim, uh, is is the guy who just turned it in still around? Yeah, yeah, he's there. He's just, you know, he's got like, oh, I've got epic armor and stuff. Why would I need a shovel? I have this sword. It's three times my size. Okay. Well, she's like, wow, that that's really cool. How did you, how did you manage to get inside the cursed well? That I could never do that. Oh, the cursed well. I was just running my friend through it. Uh, you know, he had to, uh, he had to level up a couple of times. So, you know, it's just pff, whatever. That's awesome. I I mean I, I wish I had somebody who could who could show me the ropes. I'm I'm as you can see I don't even have red armor, let alone cool purple armor. <laughs> oh, if you want to come with, if you want me to run you through, mm, well, seeing you're a noob and all, I'll, I'll just have one gold. I'll run okay. you through. Okay. Uh, l- let me go. L- let me go grab my friend who has the gold, which I know is. Like she, I, I'm guessing she has no gold on her. No, no. Uh, but we'll we'll make it a challenge. Okay. Uh, we'll say that uh, in order for you to get help to go down to the well to get the shovel, which is going to be easy with his help. Um, you'll need to come up with um, some way of convincing him to help you out. Otherwise, you might be in trouble. Okay. Does that fair? Yeah. Uh, does does has Joe Jack? Officially. I think he's getting into trouble. Okay. I, I I got a feeling that he's getting into trouble, kinda. He's he's, he's just ignoring you and like eating food and selling pieces of his house. Before you know it, he's not gonna have any money left to to, to give uh, to uh, you. So. Okay. So how do you what do you think how, how do you feel about that bug? I I think that Joe Jack has no longer owns a house. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Uh, do you want to get in the trouble and say that uh, uh, you're getting to the point where you're almost running out of money and out of house? Mm-hmm. Like, out of belongings to sell? Because these burgers are just damn good. 
<laughs> yeah, what am I going to do? Uh, fleece Kim for some money? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that'll be uh, getting in the trouble. That'll be two uh, d six. Okay. That's a six. <laughs> okay, so that's three points for you. You get three drama points. Okay. Uh, and uh, there's a negative two uh, on the role that he's going to take for, or she's going to use. Okay. Um, Kim San. I'm sorry, Kim. Joe hasn't been very helpful. At all. <laughs> It's okay. fine. <laughs> That's fine. I think it's funny. I, I, so does uh, just out of curiosity, does Jojek even know what bacon is besides delicious? <laughs> <laughs> He's like trying these mysterious, like, why did mom never make these for me? These are awesome. They're called the Imperialist Burgers. <laughs> the Imperialist Burgers. Yo. No, he, he has found something that... Um, he wants to eat during every meal now, and he's probably going to go ask the uh, cook for the ingredients for this stuff. Okay. Right on. All right. Uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and let's see. I think I want to be successful this time, so I'll figure out some kind of a way to get this guy to help me, but it may not be the the most ideal. And I've got a minus two. All right. I roll an eight minus two is a six. So. Oh no, that's a failure. Oh so I successfully figure out a way to help him, but it's a not very heroic way. Uh, maybe she just uh, goes around the corner, and there's like a, a fruit shop or something like that, sure, and she. Yeah. She, and the fruits are, you know, it's like a, it's like a kind of like a stand, and it's some fruits hanging, and they're kind of sad fruits. They don't like being here. They'd rather not be in an imperialist stand. They'd rather be out in the ground somewhere in the trees. Okay, and I'm imagining she, she, uh, the the shopkeeper keeps his money in a big pouch on on top of the table, and she just waits until he's distracted and kind of reaches in and takes one coin. Okay, yeah, you like you you ask him for like, hey, can I uh, can I get that uh, that giant grape behind you there? And as he reaches for it, you you take it, and then all the other fruits look at you like, oh, oh, oh. they don't they don't say anything, but they're they're kind of like kind of like going, I can't believe it, I can't believe that happened. Don't make me come back and eat you. <laughs> <laughs> the poor fruits and vegetable in this world. Um, <laughs> And, and you have a grape. Okay. Uh, so I go. So I reach in while he's distracted and take out one gold coin. Okay. And then go back and say, "Oh, never mind. I don't. I don't need the giant grape after all. Thank you." And go oh, okay. back to the purple one. It's like I forgot. I'm allergic. <laughs> uh, Go back to the guy at the cursed well and be like, "All right, here's your here's your gold coin." <sighs> All right, I'll run you through. This is the last time I'm running newbies through this for tonight. <laughs> My mom's gonna be mad at me. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> I I know what that's like. <laughs> cool. So, um, the next scene. So that's the end of the chapter there. Uh, the next scene. Um, does that mean that Joe Jack is it can get back into it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, do you do? You, can you think of a way that Joe Jack would uh, probably just come out of the restaurant just before they go down to the well and be like, you know, his gigantic belly is there, and he's like sipping you know, on a cup of uh, imperialist soda. Yeah, and this is like, you know, you've just ran out of all things. Your 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 bag is even sold. Your, your, back, your inventory your, bag. I your sold bag my inventory. Is <laughs> I gone. sold the whole menu. Yeah, yeah. You kept eating until it was it was done. It's like, I'm not sure we're gonna be able to fit him in the well. I we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay, so yeah, maybe this restaurant it turns out was just right next to the well, and we just hadn't noticed. So he get, gets out, and it's like, Joe Jack. Oh, oh um, man. what happened? I've just been to the happiest place on earth. He still got grease of uh, little black fur balls on his. Leg. 
<laughs> little okay. to-go bag full of uh, bacon. Okay, well... Just this look of absolute bliss on his face. Well, Soylent, Soylent Bacon is made of... No. Okay, uh, <laughs> let's... How are you doing, Kim? Uh, I'm doing good. This this guy has agreed to help me go down and, and get the shovel that that I was looking for, and we're just going to have to go right down this well. It's only a little cursed. <laughs> Come right, on, yeah, yeah. I don't have all day. You know, I've got other things to do. I've got, you know, I've got a raid at, like, four, so... Okay, well, this this guy's my tank, so let's bring him along, too. He's your tank? He's not even wearing uh, dragon scale armor of the five nines. He's your mom the five isn't nines. wearing the dragon scale armor of the five nines. Well, he's got. I'm reporting you. He's he's got some. Uh, he's got a, a a unique item, but it's invisible. Invisible item? I've never heard of it. Yep. Hmm. I better check the fact later. Okay. Well, fine, noobs. I'll run you through. Okay. So we try to go down the well and see what we can find. Sure. You, you guys successfully go down the well. Um, you get to... Um, like, he just levels everything, just slices it all up, and it's just, you know... They're, they're like, lowest level things, like, possible. He's just not, he's not even breathing through, right? Um, and then, as, as you get through the well, it's kind of creepy, and there's lots of water around. You get to the area, and there's this giant shovel uh, sitting, like, in a, in a... It looks like there's a chest, sorry. There's a chest there. Uh, with a shovel on it, and you can see above there's like a hole in the roof. <laughs> uh, <laughs> directly over the chest. <laughs> I say, okay. fine. Hey, guys, look. There's your, there's your item. Go ahead and go get it. Okay. Uh, so she she cautiously goes forward and tries to grab the shovel. Uh, the chest is locked. Oh, the chest is locked. Well, do we have... Uh, she asks if the guy knows where the key is. Is there... Oh, you didn't pick it up? Oh, that was back there. He kind of oh. points back all the ways back. Like, that was the very first thing we did. I told you. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Well... I'm not running you noobs through this again, so... Okay. Well, Joe Jack, what do you think we should do? Um, since everything's dead, can't we just go back and pick it up? Well, I think it might respawn. I'm not exactly sure how quickly. Oh, uh, yeah, the respawn th rate on this place is, is through the roof, so watch out. Okay. It's like, why don't you just take it with you? Oh, the whole what the whole chest? I don't know, but I'm not running through again. I'm gonna uh, tell you out of here in a second. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, can we do can... that? Can I pick up the chest? Sure. It seems that right. it, when you pick it up, though, it seems like there's a there's a little uh, pix uh, weird pixelization because it doesn't look like the chest should be moved. So when you when you when you move it, it's almost like you're breaking the pixels under on the bottom of the chest. That's probably nothing. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be fine. <laughs> okay, let's. So we go. We try to go back towards where the key is. Sure. Um, the other guy teleports out. It's like later, noobs. And you guys get to the very beginning where you guys started to. Uh, and then there's this uh, this key, this, this big silver key, um, that's hanging above. You can see how you can easily miss it. I mean, it's it's not in plain view, um, and it seems to be unguarded right now. But it's it's just hanging uh, in in the air, like levitating, pretty much uh, okay. overhead. Uh, Kim will try to will try to grab it. She'll try to jump up and get it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, as soon as she grabs the key, it disappears in this inner inventory. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but. As you uh, as as you look around, uh, 
those things that you were fighting, which were like uh, weird, rocky sort of monsters, begin respawning. Okay. It's like, oh no, let's get out of here quickly. Uh, hmm. Actually, she'll tr- rather than run away, I think she's going to try to quickly open the chest and get the shovel out, thinking that she can use that as her ultimate weapon. Sure. Uh, she opens up the chest, and I'm spending a point, because the chest was trapped. No! Um, and... Uh, so, uh, the, uh, let's see what kind of injury you're going to imply here. When you open it up, uh, a mist comes out, and both of you turn yellow. And when your skin turns, or it turns green, I mean, both of you turn green. Um, and then every time you take a step, it feels like you're hurting. No. Uh-oh. Little, okay. little bubbles that are appearing over your head. And I think we're poisoned. Okay, uh, do we... Do we also have the shovel? Uh, yes, you do. But you're okay. feeling as sick as crap. Okay. When you when you hold the shovel, all the monsters begin going away from you, like they don't want to touch you. She has the shovel, the ultimate shovel. It's like I can't believe no one ever noticed that this was the ultimate shovel before. <laughs> Especially if the monsters just state that outright. Yeah, but the, the shovel's kind of like just brown, and it's it's nothing special. It doesn't look good with their armor. Oh, okay. <laughs> it it doesn't match anything. It's like made not to match any set or any pair. It's just and it had, the numbers doesn't look too good on it. So when you look at the stats, the stats it's a white item. You don't really care about that stuff. <laughs> they just vendor it usually. So right on. <laughs> yeah. The... I'm getting a very Chrono Trigger vibe from this game too, and there, there's like the I think the broom <laughs> was like you have to work really hard to get the broom, and it was worth <laughs> it was worth less money than any other weapon in the game. <laughs> That's cool. I like it. Awesome. Okay, so you have the ultimate shovel. What do you do? Oh, okay. Well, we're poisoned. Um, I I look in the book to see if it t- it says anything about poison or and how to get rid of it. Uh, it costs uh, one gold at the nearest healer. One gold at the nearest healer. Wait, I, I don't have any more gold. Uh, Joe Jack, do you, do you have any more gold? <laughs> I've got some Imperious Cola. Oh. <laughs> Will that do us any good? I don't... Well, maybe it cures poison. Why don't you sip it and find out? All right. Uh, he finish off the Imperio Cola. Uh, has a couple of strips of bacon while he's at it. Is he still green? Uh, yeah, he's even more green. Oh, dang it. Um, but uh, he feels healthier, so he doesn't feel like he's you know as hurt as he was a second ago. <laughs> hmm. Can can I try some of your bacon? Um. Oh, I'll, no. I'll, oh. All right, all right, all right, fine. I'll I'll pay you back. I'll get you some more. He gives you, he gives you like half of a rasher of bacon. Okay. Right. And and, and when you eat it, it it, it kind of tastes weird because it's kind of furry, but um, it uh, no, it's good. It's it it helps you, but you're still green. Okay. Hmm. So I guess um. I guess the challenge would be, I, I guess, should I set up a challenge now? or should Sure, we, yeah, sure. Uh, would be um, to overcome the sickness, like to uh, uh, find a way to be cured. Um, okay. I, I, guess, I guess that's good. I'm not sure. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Uh, let's give, like, I don't, let's give Joe Jack a chance to. Yeah, get in the trouble or, yeah. Or be All helpful right, or whatever. Well. Um, Joe Jack ate some vegetables earlier. He can regurgitate those. Oh. And um, does your magic book say anything about the healthy power of vegetables? Uh, oh, it I've... certainly does. It says it, it has uh, ingredients 
of uh, of how to create uh, antidote, and one of it's regurgitated vegetables. Wow, <laughs> what are the odds? Okay, uh, well, I'm I'm going to try to um, I'm going to try to make a poison cure. What do you guys think? Should I should I be su- use be successful, or should I use one of the other ones? Like I don't want to, I don't want to dead end us if I fail. What are the other ones? There's you can. It's like you can definitely succeed and maybe look not heroic. You can definitely look heroic and maybe not succeed, or you can uh, risk both for slightly better odds to get both. Mm. It's like either epic success or epic fail. I think. Whoa. We need to get rid of the poison. Be be heroic. It's like, all right, now it's time to see if I remember everything from science class. And (laughs) she she pulls out a notebook, like, or she pulls out a folder that says science, and (laughs) and is like, okay, vegetables. It's like bottled water, and so she she looks good, but she may or may not actually make make the correct cure. All right. All right. So I got some help, so I get plus two. Yeah, I got a point, so I just I just okay. add a point there. Okay. Uh, I get a total of eight. That's that's good. So uh, when you find the cure, your greenness goes away, um, and uh, all the other rock creatures being approaching you, going, oh, "She has cure. She has cure," and they. They seem to be like chanting, like, like, we've been like this forever. We are the, we, you know, we we are the ones that suffered from the poison and didn't make it out in time to find a healer, and we were stuck here. Oh, crazy! So maybe we try to use some of the cure on them just to see if anything happens. So Joe Jack is just continuously throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> Like, my car keys. <laughs> I wondered where those were. <laughs> okay, um, and yeah, so eventually the the, the couple of the rock people that were there, uh, they 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 turn back into uh, uh, those little black furry things. Oh, oh. Uh, st- Joe Jack, stay away from these ones. <laughs> They've had a, a tough life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We're no longer cursed. The curse is removed from the curse well. Do you guys happen to know where I might find Torgoth? (laughs) Torgoth is the one that put us down here. He's in that big castle over there and behind all the other things. uh, Buildings, I think they're called. (laughs) Okay. The dots around. The the entire whatever the black creature, we never really give him a name, population. Bacon, I guess, is their name. The um, they just, <laughs> they uh they jump around and then saying yay the curse is removed the curse is removed yay and they ask for your name. Uh, My name's Joe Jack. Joe Jack. Yeah, that's Joe Jack, <laughs> and I'm Kim. Kim, Kim, the savior of all bacon. And Joe Jack. Oh, and Joe Jack, <laughs> yay! And they bounce around and the stuff. The keeper of vegetables. <laughs> The key for regurgitated vegetables, yes. <laughs> awesome. All right, so now what? Uh, well, I think we should go. Uh, we should do we should what? Chapter? Yeah. Okay. Now that we've and, amassed this bacon uh, army. <laughs> I think we're going to uh, go right to the uh, uh, final confrontation, probably. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, and I'm going to spend my two points to introduce the antagonist. So let's start it up. All right. So uh, they, they, they say, follow us. We'll, we'll lead you out. We'll lead you to the uh, the giant castle where the, the great imperialist is. All right. Just just like Pachacuti Sensei told me to, uh, I'm going to stop Torgoth and, and finally return to Cleveland. <laughs> Oh, that poor old man. <laughs> oh, okay, we we follow the the bacon. Uh. <laughs> All right, 
lady. Uh, and you, and uh, it leads you. Everybody ignores you, and uh, it leads you right in front of, um, of this castle. And you see that the old, an old, the old, an old man is in front of it with an exclamation mark over his head. It's, oh. it's, uh, it's po- that that dude you just said. Pachacuti. <laughs> Pachacuti. <laughs> okay. Uh, we go. We go talk to him. It's like, yay! You you, you didn't get eaten by Spider Man. <laughs> it, it's actually his twin brother. Hey, what happened <laughs> to my brother? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. Um, so um, he's like, yes, I've been waiting for the uh, for the hero to come. Uh, my brother told me that one will come with bearing a shovel. It's like, well, I have the shovel. Sorry. Okay. Um, and um, he says, "Great. Then that means you'll be able to take on the imperialist uh, Torgoth in Torgothia." Okay. Well, let's let's do it. I'm I'm ready. Right. <laughs> you must go up the stairs and knock on the door. When he answer, when, when they answer, tell them you're here to defeat Torgoth. Okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> this doesn't sound like a trap at all. <laughs> it's like, all right, um, uh, if you say so, sir. Uh, uh, Joe Jack, come with me. Let's go tell them we're here to defeat their leader. <laughs> okay, so uh, she goes up to the door. She's holding on to the shovel, and she, I think she knocks with the shovel on the door. Sure. Uh, and the uh, door... Opens up and there's this uh, young butler and says, "Yes, can I help you?" It's like, "Uh, you here to defeat Torgoth?" <laughs> ah, yes. Just a moment. <laughs> Torgoth. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's <laughs> okay. God. All right. All right. And uh... oh, so, so what's what's Joe Jack doing? Is is Joe yeah. Jack coming? Um, he's a little um doubtful of how safe this is going to be, but I mean, he's stuck by you for maybe half of this adventure. He'll he'll come along. Okay. Cool. So uh, a a man comes, a, a big brute comes down, big handsome gentleman. Um, and the butler says, Torgoth, another one challenged you to defeat you. And he's like, oh, they're here for my armor again, aren't they? Well, it's only 50% drop rate, so he says, um, and he comes down, he says, you adventurers will never, never learn. You know, I can never truly be defeated, no matter how many times you 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 claim to to claim your victory. Why do you even bother? He says, and he has a giant living room. So he basically says, "Come on in, come on in. Let's get this over with." He says. Okay, uh, Kim, kind of, so- somewhat casually puts the shovel behind her back and <laughs> and walks into the living room. <laughs> You know, the butler might be able to see it, but she kind of positions it so Torgoth might not notice it right away. And she goes, she goes into the living room and says, "Well, well, uh, Mr. Imperialist, thank you for seeing us right away." Uh, oh, no problem. This is what I do. So, here to defeat me, are you? So, what uh, great weapons do you have now? I guess you're level 99. I mean, how, who else would dare to challenge the great Torgoth? Well, actually, uh, uh, I I'm a level ninety nine in some other worlds, but in this one I'm kind of kind of new, so I'm not as inexperienced as I look. But but yeah, I I don't have a whole lot of good loot. I just have this. <laughs> oh, how come we didn't put that in a sign like everybody else did, and eventually plummet back into the chest it came from? 
Because uh, I'm not an imperialist pig. Sorry, Joe Jack. <laughs> no, I will not allow you to defeat me. Not with that. You can't defeat the great Torgoth, no matter how many shovels you bring. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> so, what's, so what's Joe Jack doing? Um, <laughs> are you gonna? Are you Jack's gonna... gonna try holding Torgoth down on the ground so you can beat him with the shovel, okay? Without fear of um retaliation. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, use my free injury, um, and on the hero line, a uh, heroine. And as uh, Joe Jack begins approaching, uh, he takes out this giant club and hits Joe Jack with it uh, like a baseball. Uh, and he just swings and he just rolls over you. Hmm. Um, and um, you notice that the shovel's broken in half. No. No. Ah! <laughs> Now what will you do? Your shovel is nothing but a stump now. Okay. Hmm. I'll still defeat you with the power of something that I'll come up with at the last minute. <laughs> Does friendship <laughs> come out of the broken shovel have? Yes, the power of friendship. <laughs> uh, it looks like the repair bill on the on the uh, the shovel is is is, is one copper. Oh. That's one copper more than we have. Yeah. It's like, oh, darn our lack of funds, Joe Jack. You, what, what, your gluttony has gotten us into so much trouble. <laughs> well, well, my it's... gluttony is going to save us. Can I try Me... throwing up again? Yeah, sure. So you, you right. threw up. You already spent your point, right? Uh, yes. So I've you, got two you throw, left. You throw up a copper. I don't remember eating that, but all right. Yes. Okay. So, what do we have to find a repair shop, or is this one of those like crafting, and it just takes the money out of our inventory? Yeah, it uses it uses money to repair, so you could just uh, you know use it for repairs. So okay. Now. Okay. I. I, there's some ting 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 ting. Yeah. Ting, so basically, you turn your back and you're like ding 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 ding, and when you come back, it's a fully repaired shovel. It's like thank goodness this thing is such a low value item, or I'd never be able to repair it this quickly. <laughs> no! How did that happen? How would you How would you defeat the challenge of Torgoth, the Imperialist? Um, let's. Do I hit it? Like, I'm trying to decide if I want to actually hit him with the shovel, which would be fine, or, you know, like, do something goofy with it. I think I'm just going to go ahead and, like, whack him, in, whack him in the leg with the shovel. Run into my stomach and bounce off so it applies more force to that hit. Oh, yeah, there you go. I kind of do, like, an, an alley-oop, run into Jojak's stomach, leap into the air, and then, like, ram right into Torgoth's knee with the shovel. Sure, no problem. How are you going to do that? Be, be heroic? Be successful? Or be, take a chance? I think I'm going to be heroic. All right, be heroic. Here we go. Because if I fail, it's just the other world that, that loses. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I got help, so... I get a total of eight. Excellent, you're heroic. No! My bad knee, he says as you smack <laughs> it into his knee. Okay. And then I, I kind of stand triumphantly holding the shovel overhead. <laughs> saying, and Torgoth is on the ground. This one's for you, Pachacuti sensei <laughs> And then she just does a kind of like a little, uh, a little eight bit dance back and forth thing. Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland. <laughs> and, and you hear some fanfare. 
Yeah. Right, some music happen. And, you know, congratulations, you defeated Torgoth, comes over your head. And, uh, and the butler's like, oh my. And, <laughs> and <laughs> everything begins disappearing, so the blocks and such. So uh, that's the end of that chapter. Okay. So the next part's going to be the conclusion. Okay. So does uh, who has fewer points? Does the does the narrator? I've got I've got zero. Okay. All right. So we'll use your your conclusion, which just means basically that you know you narrate the transition of us leaving the other world, and also that when we describe back in the real world, there there may be some some hints of magic that peek through. So as uh, you begin jumping, and you're like, yay, yay, uh, you notice that uh, things begin disappearing, and uh, d it becomes black, like much like in the montage with the loading screen. And when it, when it finishes loading, you're, you're at home in front of your computer, uh, and instead of holding a shovel, um, you're, you're holding the keyboard over your head. And you're so happy. You, you just defeated Torgoth, and it comes up. It's like, you know, congratulations and this big winner and you see all these experience points and, and money and uh, uh, yeah. And you look around and you got like a whole bunch of toys from when uh, you know you're you're obsessed with this game, so you used to collect all the toys. And one of the toys is Joe Jack. Okay. Like this like sitting that. on your shelf. He's kinda of like just kinda of like there and he's you know, kinda of like winks at you. <laughs> All right, so I picture uh, Kim saying like, "Wow, that was awesome," and uh, she, you know, like the book is still on the desk, the one, but it's not, you know, it's not exactly the the manual anymore. But right, she grabs that book and goes to the living room in her house, which where there's a bookshelf, and and I imagine her picking out another book sitting down and just starting to read it. It's like, Mr. Jones was right after all. I should I should at least check these books out from time to time. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> cool. So is, is that how we want to end it, include it? I think so. What, how about, uh, does does Joe, Joe Jack want to have any final moment? Um, well, now that Torgoth has been um, overthrown. That that's a free seat on the uh, president's <laughs> chair there, and you know Joe Jack has always believed in an agricultural democracy, as opposed to imperialism. So he might take over. And free free vegetables for all. And they're like, yes. it's like <laughs> I told you guys I was moving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. You just found a new spot. You're like. Hmm, this seems like a reasonable house. And it slowly, it slowly the, the imperialist walls begin disappearing as you're eating more and more. So <laughs> the town ended up becoming kind of like poor, so they had to, to resort to like farms again because all the money was spent. <laughs> the bacon economy. The bacon economy, yeah. Uh, they had to do a lot of farming for you, yeah. Nice. All right, all right. That seems like a good place. All right, so everybody, that was fun. yeah, I know it was very silly. Sorry, but <laughs> oh, whatever. It sometimes it goes that way, and I I dig it. So the uh, the game heroine uh, hero uh, heroine is it? Uh, w w I know I, I asked this before, but when did you say it's going to be hitting print? It it is in print. You can okay. get it on Indie Press Revolution. Okay. I think you can get it on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Um, okay, the the book of alternate settings, so like different descriptions of what to do when you're being heroic or what to do when you're being successful, like some extra tools for the narrator and stuff. That second book is out in PDF on Drive Through RPG, um, and I'm probably probably going to put it in print. I'm intending to do that in the next couple of weeks, so it should have actually. They're both available on Indie Press Revolution, and you can get them in PDF there, and you can get the main book in print there. Sweet. So, uh, Bug, mm -hmm. how did you find the game? That was fun. Um, yeah. How much? How much is it going for on? Uh, I, I the PDF is eight bucks for the main book, um, and I think the 
it's 20 for the physical book and it's 24 for the bundle or something like that mm -hmm. The right. let us let us know what the name of your podcast is someday, so we can check it out. It was fun. It was fun playing with you. Um, once upon a D six, I actually oh. looked it up while we were. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> See you on top of things. All right then, I'll, All I'll right. check that out. Awesome, All right. cool. All right, well, guys, thanks a lot. Uh, tell everybody about it and point at it and be like, oh, this is funny. Watch it. Cool. All right. All right. All right. Thanks, All right. guys. All right. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for watching Rolling Intentions on YouTube. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment. Uh, we want to hear your comments. We want to hear what you got to think about this. Uh, if you guys like this kind of stuff, we can start doing some more. Um, I do want to put up more videos. Uh, people have been requesting it, so hey, that's what I'll probably do. I want to thank uh, Josh Jordan for letting us uh, use up his time. I mean, uh, to play his game. And I also want to thank Bug uh, for um, his time as well. Uh, and Stuart for, for showing up for a brief time. Um, and uh, we had a great time. It was it was awesome. Uh, be sure to check out um, uh, Once Upon a D6 uh, on, uh, I think it's on Blogspot, and as well as um, and as well as Heroin. Once again, the PDFs are sold on uh, uh, Indie Press. Uh, go buy it, it's, it's worth it. And thanks for watching. The Dogs in the Vineyard review should be up next week.